Hey, business building warrior. Welcome to Silent Sales Machine Radio. I'm your host, Jim Cockrum. It's great hanging out with you for a few minutes today. It will be well worth your time. I promise we're going to be hanging out with two of the guest host favorites around here, Brian and Robin Joy Olson. They've done episodes several times over the past few months, and they've become fan favorites around here. We've received great feedback from their episodes. They really like diving into the details of the reality of running a successful business online based on the Amazon strategies that we teach in our flagship Amazon training course that can only be found at this website, Proven amazoncourse.com. That's provenamazoncourse.com. So Brian and Robin are two great coaches among several dozen coaches on our team that help people build beautiful businesses all day, every day from our community. We've got about 73,000 people in our free Facebook group. We just recently passed 5 million downloads on iTunes of this podcast. Maybe you're watching on YouTube. We've got a decent following there as well. We appreciate the, the viewers. Most of the people who check this out listen to the audio on their favorite podcast listening app. But the point I'm making is there's a whole bunch of us who are doing really well building beautiful businesses on Amazon. And we've been doing it for a long time. Our Amazon training course is about 12 plus years old at this point. All of our coaches are very successful students of the Proven Amazon course that we approached and invited to join our team and to become great coaches. They've got a leader's heart. They've got a teacher's heart. They have a high degree of empathy and care for the students of our community. They love seeing them succeed. And they've built beautiful businesses. And that's the case with Brian and Robin Joy today. So that was a bit of an introduction. If you happen to be new to our podcast, welcome. We're glad you've joined us. We try to keep things very newbie friendly around here. But the topic that Brian and Robin Joy are going to dive into today is specifically about the base level Amazon seller training that we provide in our community. See, there's dozens of ways to do well on Amazon, but there's only one place you should be starting if you're trying to build a business on the world's most successful e-commerce platform, amazon.com. And no matter where you live in the world, these ideas apply to you. We have many people come into our community and they've heard other places of other people building great businesses using Amazon and spending time, effort, and energy and tens of thousands of dollars, maybe launching a private label brand and those kind of things. We don't let new sellers do that. We start new sellers out by putting money in the bank we teach you the basic skills so you're learning while you put money in the bank. You're earning while you're learning, we say around here. And that's called the replens model. We've got 1,700 posts in our free Facebook group about people who have talked about the success they're having with the replens model. In some cases, six-figure a month businesses. You can get into our free Facebook group. There's a link at silentgym.com and go see for yourself all these great success stories. On this podcast alone, if you scroll back in time, you'll hear hundreds of those stories. We interview our successful students all the time. But today, like I said, we're hanging out with two of our coaching directors and they're talking about the things you can do to accelerate your success with the Amazon training that we provide. Some great ideas today, some very creative ideas. As I listened to this episode before it aired, I thought to myself, there's a couple things in here I've never heard. And these are folks that I work with all day, every day, and they're coming up with such great creative ideas. Because remember, like I said before, these are some of our top coaching directors. We've got dozens of coaches. These guys direct a team of some of those coaches. They've coached a lot of people. At this point, they've probably coached more people than I have. I'm kind of the coach of the coaches, but they're in the trenches all day, every day, helping new sellers launch and grow and accelerate through the process of seeing results. So when they make some observations about what's working and what isn't and what people should be doing, how you should be spending your time as a new student, you should be paying attention. One last thing before we jump over and get Brian and Robin in with their coach's corner this week, which I always love their coach's corner episodes, man, don't you? One last announcement, the Proven Conference is coming up get to this website to check out all the details. 40 breakout sessions this year. Incredible. We've already had over 500 people register. It's going to be a great crowd. So many quality success stories from our community, successful students. You see, we for this event, let me just, before I give you the website, you should know this event is not a parade of people that you could go watch anytime you went to on YouTube and you could buy their book anytime and hear their stories on their podcast. That's not who we bring in for our events. We bring in the successful students 
of this podcast, people who have listened to this podcast, they've taken the Proven Amazon course. That's who we put on stage. They share their story. They share what's working. They share their business model. Relationships are built. It's a tremendous event. This is the 11th time we've done this event and it gets better every year. It's the most established Amazon e-commerce event in the industry. Isn't that incredible? You can get all details at theprovenconference.com. The dates are July 6th through 8th, 2023. We're going to go to Columbus, Ohio. Join us. All the details are on the website, theprovenconference.com. We'd love to see you there. Hey, let's jump over and spend some time with Brian and Robin Joy. Enjoy this great episode. We'll talk to you again. Welcome back to Silent Sales Machine Radio. We are your co-hosts. I'm Brian. And I'm Robin Joy. And this is Coach's Corner. Ready for another great episode? I'm ready. Are you ready? I am. It's It's been been a couple of weeks. It's been a couple of weeks, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Getting back on the horse here. We've got a great topic, though, that we wrote down a long time ago. Yeah. And uh, kind of fleshed it out today. This is some really, I think, good stuff. Um, our topic today is accelerators. What kind of things can help you accelerate your uh, progress in this business? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we still have to go through all the steps. Mm-hmm. You said it well. We might have uh, used this analogy before. But you said it well one time when you said, yeah, I can stand on this side of the bridge, watch people go across the bridge to get to the other side. And I can see so many of them, you know. I can tell you when you when you come through and I, you're going to go across the bridge, I can tell you, watch out in that about halfway down, there's going to be a pothole and you got to watch out for that. I can know all about it, but I have to actually get to the other side of the bridge in order to get what's on the other side of the bridge. So uh, it's just another one of those analogies for all you know doesn't mean anything until you actually do. Yeah, and I think the point you're making here is that just one of these things Mm-hmm. is not going to make yeah. necessarily the difference in your business. There's still all the pieces and parts that are required. You still that, have to go through all the steps, go all even if you yeah. go fast. Yeah. All right, well, let's jump into the first one. What do you all think right. is an accelerator um, right out of the gate? Uh, well, I think capital can be an accelerator. Mm-hmm. Now, don't not to be confused with just because you have capital, you will go faster. Right. Unfortunately, regardless of how much capital you have, you still have to have ASINs to test. Uh, for your refunds business. So your capital is going to sit there until you have something to spend it on. But However, what do you does, have to say about it? It does provide a few other benefits. Yeah. First one I can think of is that if you have the, a, a chunk of capital, right, that you're sitting there with, you're not necessarily in a hurry, right? right? You've got a little bit of time. This can benefit you um, in a number of ways. But number one, uh, the number one way is you don't have pressure on you to have to perform right out of gate. Of course, we all want to. Mm-hmm. We all want to find success in the early days. And um, some people do find success right out of the gate. Mm-hmm. Uh, most people don't. And that's okay. And you won't feel necessarily the pressure if you're not in a hurry. Mm-hmm. Right. We don't want to be spending our rent money on this. It's going to take a little bit of time to, for it to get back, even if we make money on our money. So yeah, that's one of the more challenging aspects of of the coaching side of what we do is mm -hmm. when is when we're working with someone who needs to turn it around very quickly. We can't control Amazon, right? Right. I mean, we can we can help you get up to speed pretty quickly on sourcing and and uh, and other parts of the business, but there's still the Amazon machine that you have to wait on. And so, uh, as long as you know that coming in, I think you're okay. And that's why usually we recommend when people are just getting started, if they have a certain amount of capital that they're not adding to every week, they just have this chunk of capital for inventory that they're going to start with. We recommend that they break that out into about six chunks and send about a sixth of it in a week so that as that money starts going through the whole process and coming back to you, then it'll start being a a cycle and you can keep that momentum going. Whereas if you just spend it all in one, if if you did happen to have enough faces to spend it all in one week, then you'd be waiting for that capital to come back if you didn't have anything to add to it. Yeah, that's a good point. It kind of leads into the second um, one, which is if you have an ample supply of capital, you can spend for six weeks without necessarily having to get money back from Amazon. Right. So that you're not feeling the pressure of, oh, when am I going to get paid so I can continue to go shopping and, and do mm-hmm. these kinds of things? But like you say, the way we handle that is take whatever amount that you have. And it doesn't have to be all of it either. Right. Right. That's true. Take an whatever amount. Want to start with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Divide by six. Spend. Make that your weekly spend goal once you've got sufficient ASINs that you can go shopping for. 
And then you don't need to worry about how fast you're getting your capital back. It's going to come back to you in about six weeks, sometimes a little bit sooner, sometimes a little bit longer. Yeah, depending on, yeah, sometimes it takes a little bit longer to get received Mm -hmm. on the dock and things like that. So Mm -hmm. plan for these ahead of time. Just setting expectations out there. It's not going to come back next week. And they're going to hold a little bit of it. In the beginning, they're going to hold a little bit of it from your first sale. So you're not going to get it all back the first time you get money back. A lot of things involved there. But yep. All right. Another thing that you can do if you've got sufficient capital is you can potentially outsource sooner. Mm -hmm. So if you want to, if you are like, oh, I'm tired of prepping, Mm -hmm. Um, I'm tired of shopping or I'm tired of shipping. Well, you can hire that out, you know, hire your teenager, hire your niece, your nephew, like Mm -hmm. we did. Hire your somebody in the church, family member, church, family members. We use a lot. Right. Friends. And you can even go third party. You can go uh, find a full service prep center that you can outsource um, some of that business to. You Mm -hmm. can hire an assistant to do some tasks for you, Mm -hmm. um, even in Amazon, um, some administrative tasks. Right. Exactly. You can do that sooner if you have more capital. Doesn't mean, I don't think you, we don't, I'm pretty sure we agree on this. (laughs) We don't suggest that you go outsourcing those things on day one. No. What is that they say, they say <laughs> is do it before you delegate. So you yeah. kind of know what, what you're delegating to someone. So if they come back with a question, mm-hmm. you've got answers. I think I think Matt Thompson, our yeah. uh, co- uh, one of our coaching directors, was the first person I heard say that. And I mm-hmm. absolutely agree. Do before you delegate mm-hmm. so that you know what kinds of, of issues might come up and you know how to deal with those. If mm-hmm. you haven't done it yourself it's going to be harder to deal with those issues that do come up. Yeah. So, so good. capital can be an accelerator. Capital can be an accelerator. Not a requirement. Not a requirement. Right. Uh, some capital is a requirement. Sure. Yeah, you're going to have to have But some. it's not required that you have a large amount of capital. You really can you really can have a smaller amount of capital and get started in this business. Mm-hmm. You may take a little bit more time if you have a low amount of capital. Doesn't mean it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a great segue into our second one. And which is? I know this is one of your favorites, time. Mm-hmm. We've got great stories here. But if you've got time, nothing but time, available for this business, well, it, we know in the beginning, you're going to be spending all that time sourcing, mm-hmm. right? Really? You don't have anything else you that you can do, do yet, until yet, you, except for sourcing. you source something that you can send into Amazon, right? And you do, and you should source. Yes. Right? Again, do it before you delegate it. Mm-hmm. Remind, tell me the story again. Remind me about how... When you decided to come and participate in a good way, like be, be my business partner in the Amazon business, and and you said, okay, what do I need to do to make this my? Well, I can do this full time, right? So, so I had an issue where I had had to stop working for a little while, and I kind of liked that. I didn't want to have to go back to work for a a traditional boss, mm-hmm. and so I asked you if I could come and join you in this business and what would I have to do in order to make that make that where I didn't have to go back to work and you gave me a certain number of ASINs that I needed to find by Thanksgiving mm-hmm. and uh, we did the math on that and we, it came out to like if you can find eight ASINs a day mm-hmm. just five days a week we weren't working on the weekends right right then by Thanksgiving then mm-hmm. you don't have to go back to work right, right. that was kind of the right the exactly and this is where I proved out proved out that thing that we see over and over and over. If you uh doing the methods that, that we use, you usually can find an ASIN an hour to test. So I was working eight hours a day to find eight as eight ASINs a day, eight hours a day to find eight at one out ASIN an hour. <laughs> and I did it. And I never had to go back to work for a traditional boss and I've been my own boss. And years ever since. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny she thinks she's the boss. <laughs> it's uh, funny he thinks I'm not his boss. <laughs> yeah. Well, so if you've got nothing but time, you can yeah. source. And, you know, today, I think we've learned a lot since those early days. And even the methods mm-hmm. that uh, that we teach our coaching clients today generally result in more than one hour, uh, one ASIN per hour. Mm-hmm. But even if he didn't know anything, like we barely knew anything at the time. We were in our first year. Mm-hmm. Six months in. Yeah. And you had already, you had built to about $8,000 a month yeah. in sales. I was going to say about 60 ASINs is what, what okay. I had at the time All right. before you came in. And, and I was well, that's like, pretty good. if you can add 140 to that, uh-huh. then we'll be sitting in a pretty good place. Uh-huh. Okay. So Yeah. And along with yeah, some other things that we had going on. But yeah, it worked out well. 
And then if you've got nothing but time, or if you've got ample time, Mm -hmm. then you've got more time available or the same amount of time, but you've got sufficient time available for the shopping, the sourcing, the prepping, the shipping, doing Mm -hmm. all that stuff. And, And where you spend your time will change after you build a, after you start having your tests turn into replens. And even after you start identifying tests, then you're going to be spending a little bit less time on sourcing because now you've got to carve out time to do the shopping, the prepping, and shipping. Mm-hmm. Even if you're shopping online, yes. it takes time. It does. It takes time. I find that to be a time suck every time. Sometimes <laughs> I feel like it's just more convenient. I'm just going to walk over there and <laughs> yeah. buy it than the amount of time I spend like getting... Uh, trying to place an order, oh, I can't buy that many, or my order might get canceled, or they don't have enough. I still find my credit card number. I have to open it. Yeah, a new account on that website. Yeah, so those those are the things. They take, they take time. Now, keep in mind, if you have less time than I did, at, at mm-hmm. that time, I had eight hours a day to spend on it or more mm-hmm. to spend on this. If you don't have eight hours a day, most people do not. It just happened to be the situation. Then doesn't mean that you're not going to do well. Before that, you got up to about 60 ASINs by by yourself. Well, that, about- right. This is, it's to the point. That was an accelerator we had available at that time. Right. Right. We did, I didn't have that available prior to that. And most yeah. people probably don't. So that I just want to make that point. Just because you don't have time doesn't mean you won't be successful. Right. It's just an accelerator. The more time you have, mm-hmm. the faster you might be successful. Yep. Okay, good. All right, what's the next that one? one? The next one I'm, I, I put down here is ASINs. Mm-hmm. I think if you've got an abundance of high-quality ASINs and you have the capital, mm-hmm. but even if you didn't have a ton of capital, high-quality ASINs will get you a long way because you don't have to necessarily spend the time sourcing if mm-hmm. they're already there. Mm-hmm. You do have to shop, prep, and ship. But as we know, the sourcing can be the biggest chunk of time out of that piece of pie, of mm-hmm. your time pie is, is uh, sourcing. So if you've already got uh, a list of ASINs, then that can be very appealing. Yes. Yes, it can. And the way you get that list of ASINs is to test as many ASINs as you can. Mm-hmm. So we have a lot of people who start with zero ASINs, and we encourage them to try to get 100 qualified replant ASINs. Mm-hmm. To do that, you have to test a whole bunch of ASINs. You have to look at a whole lot of ASINs to find a few to test. You have to test a whole lot of ASINs to find a few to go in your replants list. And those tests get better and better as time goes by. Mm-hmm. But I always tell people it's gonna it's gonna pop for you. And that's what I mean, that's what I'm what you mean, I think, by saying the more ASINs you have. Once you get up into that 50 or 60 range, then it starts going, oh now, the more ASINs I have, the faster I can get to more ASINs because I've gotten good at this by going through the process of finding those first 50 or 60 ASINs. And my last yeah. 50 or 60, when I'm on my way to 100 ASINs, go much quicker. And they're usually better. And they're usually right? better. Because, because those first ones, you've got, yeah. Right. The first ones are just like any time. Like, like imagine you're making a quilt or you are making a, a cabinet mm-hmm. or you're, you know, Trimming in these new uh, uh, trimming an animal in these bushes you have in your yard the first time it's not it's, it's okay probably right right, right. Um, but the more you do it the better you get and so the quality of the ASINs as you progress through this is going to get better right and a hundred quality replant ASINs easily get you a fifteen k month depending on your price point if you're doing a lot of ten dollar things uh, at, at for an average sales price probably not going to get you there but um, anything in that 25 30 35 dollar price point is going to very that's quickly the selling price you're talking about yes the selling mm-hmm. price yeah then that's going to get you very quickly to a fifteen thousand dollar a month in sales Amazon business mm-hmm. yes which is a very nice place which is to really start dialing in your business and right. add, adding things that's why to we it. try to get people to 100 ASINs as quickly as we can, making sure that we're, you know, as solidly stepping, with, with on foundation. All, stepping on all the bases, right? Mm-hmm, we don't want to get right? called out because we didn't touch second That's base. Right. We don't have to uh, go back. <laughs> right. But having those, and I totally lost what I was going to say there, but <laughs> basically just making sure that you've got a, a nice stable of ASINs now, the, the game changes for you. Mm-hmm. I we encourage people to get to 100 ASINs. Picked, picked it right back up. So the game changes. Now we go from examining the business at a ASIN level to now we've got to book a business. We've got to mm-hmm. book a business we can impact. We can work with something, mm-hmm. right? If we don't have any customers, if we don't have any ASINs, it's very hard to tweak your business and improve on it because you just need more of them right. to start off with. So getting to 100 
then it gives you a bit of business to work with. Well, it kind of gives you some balance too. So some of them may not be that great every week, but you've got ones that will be better than you thought every week. So when you're able to kind of look at it as a book of business, making a certain return, then that's a whole lot easier to deal with than when you're working at ASIN by ASIN by ASIN. So as soon as you can get up to 75 or 100 ASINs in your qualified replans list, the better you're going to feel about pulling that trigger. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm not sure, but I think I'm going to test it. You'll feel better about that Mm -hmm. when you have something to balance it. Mm -hmm. All right. Great. Next topic. Yeah. Coaching. Coaching. We knew we were going to say that. (laughs) <laughs> coaching. Okay. First of all, let's just qualify. Coaching, not required. Not required. Not required, right? You can be successful in this business without a coach. That and reminds me do of a quote that I'm going to bring up here mm-hmm. on my screen, or uh, I got to pull up because I can't remember the whole thing. You can be just as successful in this business without a coach. Mm-hmm. It just may take you a little bit more time mm-hmm. because if you want the formulas for success, this is a quote from Thomas J. Watson. We watched this video a couple of weeks ago, mm-hmm. and this just really stood out to us. I'm going to read it. Okay, It's a little, it's not short and sweet. It, it's a little lengthy. It goes like this. If you want me to give you a formula for success, it goes like this. It's really quite simple. Double your rate of failure. Mm-hmm. You're thinking about, if you're thinking about failure as the enemy of success, but really it isn't. You can be discouraged by failure or you can learn from it. So go ahead and make mistakes. Make all of them because that's where you will find success. So what we do as coaches then is we help people identify where those mistakes are and avoid them. So Because we've made them. We've made them. Or we've seen people make them. Other coaching clients have made them, Mm -hmm. right? So we're able to say that that would be a mistake. Don't do that. And Mm -hmm. then you get to learn from that. Oh, that would be a mistake. But guess what? You didn't have to go through, you didn't have to experience it to realize that it was a mistake. Mm-hmm. And that's the benefit of coaching. Doesn't mean that you can't do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's perfectly acceptable to find all the ways that it doesn't work before yes. you find the way that it does work. Yes. Fair? Yeah. I think there's another benefit to to coaching. I think mm-hmm. that's a that's a really good one. I think I was just talking to a coaching client just before we made this require recording, excuse me. And she was telling me. I said, one of the things that we really liked when we got coaching, and it was mostly you that was getting the coaching, but one of the things that really was a benefit for you was to be able to say, okay, here's what I think. I think this might be a good ace, and here's why. Am I on the right track? And the person I was talking to absolutely agreed because it just helps you feel more confident in pulling that trigger, in making that choice, because you have someone who's been through it before give you another pair of eyes Mm -hmm. that will help you get, you know, feel more confident about making making that step. So do you think it's fair to say that if you do have coaching that you're never going to make a mistake? No. No, we've made plenty of mistakes in the head coach. Even with coaching and, and, and even with a lot of people that we hang out with who are very successful in this business, we still make mistakes. It's because sure. we're venturing into areas that you know are new to us. And if you're not doing that, then you're probably not growing. Right, right. Part of it is it that you have to make mistakes in order to learn what you need to learn to get to the next step. Yes. I think most people probably agree with that. I think so. And it just reminds me of something that I've been saying a lot lately, which is the absence of failure doesn't equal success. Yes. Right. So we have to keep failing uh, as we're learning, as we're growing. If we don't, like I said a minute we ago, keep, we have to keep finding aces that won't work. Yes. So we keep finding aces that won't work, and we have to find those so that we can find those aces that will work. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. We yeah. keep having to test aces that that don't pass the test so that we can find aces that do pass the test. If we don't test any, we don't know which ones will pass the right. test. I think there's another benefit to coaching that can be an accelerator, which is because as coaches have seen a number of coaching client situations, Mm -hmm. we can, we, not just us, but all coaches can tailor advice for our client's specific situation. Yes. I I think that can be very helpful because if I'm a single mom and I'm working two jobs, I'm going to have a very different need to set up my business Mm -hmm. in a very different way than if I'm someone who lives in Singapore and I have uh, plenty of time, but 
uh, and no kids, no other obligations. But I need um, to use a prep center. But I need to use a prep I center. I need to set up my. Everybody has their own. Yeah, go ahead. I need to set up my stuff in in the U.S. My bank account, my entity, right. all these other challenges that uh, that are foreign to someone mm-hmm. who's not from here. Or maybe you're you're a family who's going to do this all together, and there are five children, you know, between eight and eighteen that want to help out. Well, you can get a lot of tasks done with mm-hmm. that many people in the same group. So everybody's situation is different. And every coaching client that comes to us has their own unique situation. And we need to make a plan that works for their situation, not for, there's no cookie cutter situation that, you know, you have to make this work or it's not going to work for you. Yep. Not the case. Right. Right. Okay, good. Coaching can be an accelerator. Coaching can be an ex- a very good accelerator. And the next one here, consistency. This is one of my favorites. Me my too. Favorite. I, I, I know they're all my favorite, but yeah. I think this one is very, very important. So based on our experience and very hundreds of coaching clients that we've worked with experience, mm-hmm. consistency is going to be a very important accelerator for anyone who's trying to do this business. Six mm-hmm. weeks of consistent sourcing, shopping, prepping, and shipping is going to ensure results. Yes. Now, we want to make sure they're the right kind of results. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, that's why we have the benefit of being in the community. That's why coaching can help. And, and coaching can help. Community too. Yes, can absolutely. help. Listening to the, to yeah. the uh, podcast can help. Being a subscriber to PAC. There's yes. a lot of things that can make sure that the kind of results you're getting are the positive kind of results, right? Right. But being consistent is going to ensure results, which is what we're looking for. And that can be an accelerator. But may I say the other way? Yeah. Not being consistent or or lack of consistency mm-hmm. can be a decelerator. Is that yeah. true? Yes, I think that's exactly right. And, and I think at one time we talked about governors in this business, and I'm not mm-hmm. sure we came up with consistency, but I think it is very much a, can be a governor in this business. If you're not consistent, it feels like you're starting over all the time. You don't get the benefit mm-hmm. of one of the things we're going to talk about next, I think, which is momentum. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Momentum, mm-hmm. yeah. Get that momentum going and keep it going. Mm-hmm. So momentum, getting through those first six weeks and keeping it going while rolling your profits back into inventory will ensure momentum, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to ensure a steady upward climb Mm -hmm. from a sales perspective, as long as you're doing all the other uh, components um, properly, right? Sourcing and and, uh, getting your shopping done right. And Mm -hmm. you're not, you know, didn't make a mistake on a bad buy or, I mean, those things are going to happen, but you didn't go super deep on something that went against you. Right. Um, Something that stole all your capital. All right. Make sure you're following the process, but get that momentum and keep rolling profits into the business before you start taking some or all of it out. Then this is going to ensure this is a what we're called an accelerator. (laughs) What are we talking about? We'll get we'll get back. And then I like to suggest make sure you're at a plateau, whatever that level is, before you kind of take your foot off the gas. And Mm -hmm. that doesn't mean stop. It just right. means don't accelerate anymore. If you're maintaining fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month, I mean, if you've hit that level, then just maintain it. So we like to see people get to about a hundred qualified replans on their list yeah. before they they back off. You intense focus effort, get that done, and it's going to take weeks and months to get there. Even if you're you know going really fast, mm-hmm. and no matter how much capital you have, it's going to take time to get there. And it's not necessarily the funnest thing to do, right? True. Which kind of leads us into, oh, wait, there's one more thing I wanted to say about the plateau. Okay. The intense focus effort you touched yes. on, it, right? We can only do that for so long. Right. Um, you three have to take a breath. months, six months, maybe 12 months maximum. But especially if it's uh, like we work with a lot of coaching clients, they're couples. Mm-hmm. They both have full-time jobs. Mm-hmm. They have kids, mm-hmm. pets, mm-hmm. family outside of the Mm -hmm. home. And then they're doing this business as well, which is 10, 15, 20 hours a week. Mm -hmm. And that intense focus effort really can only last for so long before you potentially burn out. Mm -hmm. So we do like to recommend um, for those types of accounts. And again, this goes back to the tailored advice for your needs. Start thinking about outsourcing something sooner rather than later, Mm -hmm. because you don't want to get into this position where you are just going to throw your hands up in the air and quit because you got worn out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We that focus. last that last straw got put on your back and you broke. We've we don't want to get in that position. We told the story before about 
how we, when we bro- first broke five figures, I reached out to my coach and said, wow, this, I don't know how I'm ever going to get to 20,000 a month because 10,000 a month is killing us. <laughs> right. <laughs> We were every minute of every day and you were working a full-time job. It felt like it, but we really wasn't. But what happens, we were, you know, worn out, obsessed. I think we were both obsessed and we are still. But that's what it took. I mean, still obsessed and passionate uh, about this. Yes. And that's one of the joys of, if if it happens to line up for you where this is something you can be passionate about, then it doesn't necessarily feel like work. And we talk about it all the time. We do. Like we are always on <laughs> business on all the time. <laughs> we do because we get a lot of joy mm-hmm. out, out of the business and our relationships in the business. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we get a, we we've found a lot of joy since yeah. we started doing this and since we um, joined this community. Well, anyway, the the whole point there is our coach was helping us to scale and get some things off of our plate, and and it and it worked, and we were able to scale past that pretty quickly. But anyway, okay. Good. Yes, and we did start outsourcing, and that helped a lot. It did help a lot. All right, the next one. Advanced sourcing methods. I know, it seems like I have an agenda here, and I really don't. <laughs> but it just so happens to coincide earlier that uh, Robin uh, had a coaching session um, with a client who was like, oh, I'm so bored of sourcing. Yeah. Right? I'm so bored and of it sourcing. It is. It can't get boring. She's still in the beginning. Yeah, and it can get boring. It's It's hard to keep that up for a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially when you're by yourself. So what do you say about that? So, well, the first thing I'm reminded of is another quote that we saw a couple of weeks ago. I'd like to just read it here. <laughs> Repetition can be boring and or tedious, which is why so few people ever master anything. Mm. So if you can get over the board, the boring part of it, like, it uh, I could do this with both hands tied behind my back and a blindfold on. Great. That's where we want you to get <laughs> yeah. to, right? Yes, I know it's it's you know not necessarily the funnest thing because because you can do it that way you're not challenged necessarily but uh, you, we we say you can mix it up with these advanced sourcing methods so it is nice to have a variety of sourcing methods whether that is uh, using Keepa whether that's using tactical arbitrage whether that's using like AZ three sixty or one of those sort of on page yeah. calculators that helps you with sourcing. Just something taking kind pictures of, in the store, right? Go to the store, scanning things. You know what? Yeah. Going to the store and, and sourcing right there. Mix it up. Keep it fresh, right? That will also help keep your interest. Mm-hmm. Try a different store. Try a different category. And you're growing that whole time while you're doing yeah. it. You're learning about, you know, a different way to do it or a new way to do it. And you're diversifying. Yeah. And that, so if something happens to that way of doing it, you have other ways to go to. And that really is an accelerator. Yes. It sounds like, well, I'm just doing different things, but really you're getting good at a lot of different things, which is at a certain point going to like, you know, multiply your mm-hmm. your level of progress. Absolutely. I agree with that. All right. What's next? Uh, the next one that we put on here was we leverage. And we have. Well, I mean, we, we, we're kind of segueing into this one because we just talked about. Yeah, I, I did mention it. I got a little bit ahead there, but mm-hmm. leveraging the tools that you have. Yeah. It's so easy to. Uh, maybe be distracted by the plethora of um, bright, shiny objects out there. Mm -hmm. Um, But really just focus on the tools that you have. What do we say is really the only tool you really need, excuse me, for this business? Keepa. Keepa. If you haven't figured Keepa all out yet, um, and not that you have to know it from A to Z to get started. No. But if you've got some time and you're, you know, maybe not looking to spend money on some more tools... Well, if you, let's say it this way, if you're doing the, the Pomodoro met- method and you work 25 minutes and you have five minutes to take a break, find some other ways you can, uh, some other things that you can learn about Keepa. Yeah. Don't overlook the power of the tools that you already have is the point yeah. with this one, right? And I mentioned the, so we already said Keepa. I mentioned the AZ360 back mm-hmm. to the arbitrage, mm-hmm. right? Just keep on the tools that you already have instead of looking for something new that's going to be better. Yes. Right. And this kind of leads into a topic you and I were kind of passionate about the other night, which is I don't think it matters what method that you want to do, mm-hmm. whether you want to do keep this one thing. Cases. Yep. Whether you want to do tactical arbitrage, mm-hmm. whether you want to uh, do wholesale, um, whether you want to whatever mm-hmm. bright, shiny, shiny object is out there, it doesn't matter. They yeah. all are going to take they about the same amount of time and they will all work. Yeah. So, Focus on what it is that you set out to do. And this is one I didn't put on the list. It's coming off ad hoc. Right? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Don't bounce around. Focusing on the method that you have chosen will ensure uh, accelerated success. So that means like, don't just 
maybe get halfway through figuring Keepa out and then go, well, I'm going to go do TA because that's probably easier. And then you run into the TA buzzsaw um, <laughs> that a lot of people struggle with. And you're like, okay, well, that wasn't it. I better go check out something else. Yeah. And before you know it, you're six months into this business and you could have been way farther along in your business, much farther along in your business than you are because you've been bouncing around. And this is another place where a coach can be really helpful. You know, you'll choose something together, a way to find ASINs, and you'll stick with that. And, and your coach can help you, to, you know, stay focused on that and remind you that that's what, you know, what we planned on doing. Make a plan and stick with it. I think it maybe got... I overshadowed what you said, but I think you had a great point, which is it doesn't matter the method that you're going to do right? because they all work. Yes. But pick one and stick with it. Yes. Yeah. So we do recommend that you start with replans if you haven't sure. done any any sales on Amazon before. It is absolutely the lowest risk that we know of, the, the lowest amount of capital that you'll need and the highest chance for success, the fastest mm -hmm. success. Now, yes, there are other methods that you'll grow into that have maybe better, feels like better success, but, but they may have a lot more capital needed or a longer upswing time to get ready for it. So that's why we do recommend that people do start with replans. But with replans, you can find the ASINs in many different ways mm -hmm. to build a replans list. And you can find the sources, the suppliers in mm -hmm. many different ways as well. Right. So after you've mastered one, yeah, go master, then go pick up some other ones. But the bouncing around can be a, a struggle. True. Sure. All right. And maybe... My second favorite one on the list because I already said I had a favorite one, but this one came in last minute by you, and all, I thought it was awesome. All of my, I love my all of my children the most. Yes. Oh, good thing I only have one kid. Children. Right. <laughs> what is what is our final uh, accelerator here? If you want to get good at something, teach someone else how to do it. Yes. So if you have a teenager in the house, or someone that you work with closely, or even each other, Brian taught me. I mean, it's it's a principle that I've. I've seen over and over throughout life. If I want to get good at something, I'll teach someone else how to do it. That forces me to really find the answers, mm -hmm. not just, well, it feels like that should be the right thing and really build a strong foundation. What do you think about teaching someone? I couldn't agree more because uh, I, as a, one of my first um, paying gigs after I got out of college was basically like as an instructor for the same college course that I had just graduated from, like I was like a TA, right? This is the way this is the way IT was back in those days. <laughs> and, there were three of us doing right, IT, right. and one of them was teaching the other two. <laughs> exactly. So nothing like te teaching someone else how to do it. And I learned that early on as a as a pretty young adult that I got really good at something by teaching someone else how to do it. So and mm -hmm. and and you just get used to it over time. That, that this is a natural thing that happens. What's not necessarily natural is learning how to do the this FBA replens business. But once you, all you have to be is one step ahead of the person that you're teaching. True. Right? So um, you can figure out, you know, you learn how to prep and pack or you learn how to shop. And then you teach someone else how to do it. You'll get better at it because they're going to ask you questions yes. that maybe you didn't anticipate or you didn't get to experience. And they're going to have challenges that you're going to have to help them overcome and mm -hmm. find solutions for. Mm -hmm. And maybe just in the way that they approach doing the work, you know, you learn than you from did. your students as well. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I love this point. It's a great one. Teach someone else how to do it. Mm -hmm. And that will be an accelerator for you as well. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a form of outsourcing, which allows you then mm -hmm. to go gain knowledge in a different space. Uh, yeah. Space. Have someone intern with you. <laughs> Here's how you pack and ship. Now do that several times and I'll give you an A. <laughs> All right. One more I didn't put on the list here. What uh, That's an accelerator is don't get down about something that didn't work. We kind of touched on this before around the, mm -hmm. the failure. W rate of failure. Yeah. W rate of failure. Embrace uh, that. Right. Celebrate um, that. And how do you manage that problem should it come around? How do you fix that problem, Robin? How do you fix the problem of having what's the problem any problem doesn't any matter. problem more asins more asins more asins yes. that's how you fix the problem <laughs> <laughs> all right good uh, is this a good spot here I think it's a good spot what do you guys think yes good good, good. <laughs> i can see you all saying yes please be done <laughs> yeah <laughs> we appreciate you guys yes thanks everyone we'll see you soon see you soon hey thanks for joining us today 
I've got one last thing before I let you go, though. Stick around for a tip from Jeff Schick. If you haven't heard him before, he stops in once a week or so, hangs out with us for a few minutes and talks about Amazon policy, Amazon legal. He's the go-to expert for our team, for my business, for so many of the leaders and coaches in our community and a whole bunch of listeners to this show as well. He's got a great model where for just a few dollars a day, you can put him on retainer and anything, Amazon legal policy, those sorts of things, IP complaints, his team handles it with you and for you. And he's always got a great tip for us. It's jeffschick.com. You can see it in the show notes as well. But Jeff, what do you got for us this week? All right. Well, today we're talking about something a bit more sensitive. It's uh, stolen goods on Amazon. And uh, I'll jump right into it. We have about eight sellers that we're working with right now that have had some form of stolen goods issue touch their account. So Mm -hmm. some sellers are being asked to verify where their goods came from, and they're thinking that they might have a problem. Uh, We have some sellers that have actually been notified by Amazon that they were found to be selling stolen goods who are currently suspended. We have other sellers who, who... were notified that they were selling stolen goods, but are not suspended, that are kind of like in a limbo state right now. And so Amazon's been taking different actions depending on the seller pretty arbitrarily um, in typical Amazon fashion. It's a great Uh, fuzzy area that you need to avoid at all costs is what I'm hearing so far. Absolutely. So, and it really comes down to diligence, due diligence. Mm -hmm. So, and and by by the way, just to be clear, I, I don't think anyone in our community actually steals goods, but you can get your hands on stolen goods without realizing it. Right. Really easily. The deal feels too good to be true. Eddie's selling out of the back of his truck or some bargain discount barn. I mean, like, where are these stolen goods ultimately coming from? That's Those are my guesses. And people aren't actually going out and stealing goods and selling them. No, no. I yeah, no, no. No, I, I don't think most of our clients, yeah, I can say uh, at least 100% of clients I'm working with did not actually physically shoplift the goods. Right. Um, but they did. Per, but every one of the clients I worked with actually bought from what they thought was a wholesale company. Mm-hmm. So they, it wasn't even like they went to, you know, bargain basement, you know, you know, pallets, pallets are, you know, available here for 20 bucks, you know, and type right. of place. They actually went to legit wholesalers. They paid close to regular MSRP, you know, or did or wholesale pricing on a product. So, you know, if a product goes for $20 retail and distributor pricing would be, you know, 12 bucks or whatever, you know, in Keystone pricing, it'd be like 12 bucks, 10 bucks. Uh, they paid... 10 bucks, 12 bucks for it. They didn't, there wasn't, it wasn't, they were paying $2. They were paying full price, but it turns out that these distributors or wholesale companies were fake and they were just, they're just shell companies set up by um, what right now the California Highway Patrol is alleging to be, you know, drug cartels that stole goods. Um, Either some of them stole entire tractor trailers, some of them robbed warehouses, and then some of them actually sent children into stores and shopped up the goods from stores. Knowing so, that they can't get in trouble because they're under 18. And, you know, in California, you got the $900 a day limit or whatever it is. People are trying to figure right. out how to turn those stolen goods into cash. You know, and we've all seen the, you know, crash and grab mobs clearing out stores. What are they going to do with that stuff? Well, try to turn it into cash. That right. stuff could end up on a pallet. And next thing you know, you're selling it. That's right. crazy. Wow. So, so I know it's like this obviously introduced a lot of fear. So, how do we avoid it? I mean, I'd hate to say a blanket rule is avoid any wholesaler based in Southern California. (laughs) But if they are based in Southern California, you may want to really do your due diligence because (laughs) that's where right now most of these companies are coming from. Well, that's where the crazy laws are. That's where, you know, the the center of the crazy universe seems to be there a lot of times when it comes to business laws. And and I'm I'm pretty sure, I mean, verify it, look it up yourself, but it's like either $500 or $900 a day you can shoplift and you're not going to be prosecuted. Right. It's quite crazy. It's quite yeah. a lot. So, so how do you avoid it? I mean, really, it just comes down to due diligence. So, you know, if some, if you look up and, you know, I'm going to make up a complete, completely made up name here, you know, prime distributors. Well, first off, might be concerned about the word prime because that's a red flag that this is not, that this is like not a real distribution company, but it sounds cool. And it probably resonates well with Amazon sellers because they hear prime and think, oh, wow, it must be a legitimate big company. No, it's yeah, really not. It's, yeah. Yeah. So first thing is you think about the name, you know, do they, does the name sound like Amazon or Prime or any of these Amazon-ish type companies? If it does, red flag. Similarly, go to um, California Secretary of State. They have us, you can type in any company that's registered in California. Mm. So if they claim that their name is, you know, Amazing Wholesale Deals LLC, you go to, go to um, type it in on Secretary of State. Was it created last year? If so, they're probably not an authorized dealer of big brand name products. It's really right. hard to get those contracts. 
So that's another red flag. Or if it doesn't exist at all, big red flag too. You know, like if it's Mm -hmm. just a fake company. Um, Other things you can use, uh, things like internet archives, waybackmachine.org, I believe is what it is. You can type in any website there and see what it looked like throughout history, you know, if they, they have screenshots in time. So if you type it in and it says it was created, you know, six months ago, red flag, you know, big wholesale companies selling brand name goods are generally established businesses that have been around at least a decade. I mean, you know, it's, you don't get to sell 3M products if you haven't been around for 10 years or more. It's, right. it's you're not, they're not taking startups out of generosity of their heart. They're it's just not going to happen because they've got to uphold their supply chain. So, it, you know, and then just, you know, talking to people, you know, if they don't have a phone number, they don't have a legit, you know, address, like you should be able to type in the address for a distributor on Google Maps and click on Street View. And if they're a big distributor that's selling, you know, I'm just going to harp on 3M. It's, by the way, 3M is not one of the stolen products. But it's assume that, you know, it's 3M that, they're, that you're going to buy from them. 3M is not going to sell to a distributor that doesn't have their name, the name of the company on the side of the building, or at least on a sign. So if you're going down the street and it's a UPS store address, definitely not. Not a real distributor. If PO you're box. going on the P.O. box, not a real distributor. If you're going on and it's a house, not a real distributor. Mm-hmm. If you go on and it's a warehouse, but there's no name on it, or the name on the warehouse on Street View doesn't match up with the name that you're expecting for the company. Right. Doesn't mean that it's not a real distributor, but I would certainly look Red into flag. what is that company. You know, like yeah. what is the name on that warehouse? Yep. And look them up and figure out, you know, who they are. Great tips, man. So if if I'm one of your clients and I've got you on retainer and I'm considering a wholesale source, is this something that you guys would help me investigate? Absolutely. We do it all the time for sellers. So you just schedule a 20 minute call with us. There's no charge. We jump on the phone, we look at it with you and you know, I like to say we tear it apart. <laughs> it's yep. either going to be able to put back together or it'll end up in a pile on the floor and it's you you want to avoid that pile anyway. So yep. it's uh and I, I love you guys are developing some real instincts where I've noticed a few times I've reached out to your team and it's like, Yeah, you're the thirtieth person to ask. Yep, don't do that. <laughs> I'm like, okay, <laughs> well, there you go. You've already done the hard work and research. You guys already kind of probably know who some of these bad actors are. Don't want to get you into the any litigation by calling them out on a podcast, but you guys have your yeah. list internally that we can kind of all benefit from by bouncing these things off, getting your opinion we, on things. So I always appreciate that, we, man. Absolutely. We definitely do. We have a list of brands and we have a list of distributors and stores and everything in between. So the beauty of us is we're completely paperless because obviously we've got a team on multiple continents here. So right. we all have to share access to this data. Yeah. And so it's, you know, we can type in almost any data point into our tool. And it's going to give us a global view of who's worked on that case, if there is any case related to it, mm-hmm. what happened and how. And so we, we use that for a lot of our, deci- our you know, decision making, you know, yeah. decision trees. Yeah, I think so, of you guys almost as like as a, as a traffic light, you've got your red light, like, no, nope, no, do this, stay away. You got your green light, yeah, like, yeah, go for it. And you got your yellow, like, well, here's the risk. Some people are getting away with it. Some people are getting, you know, into some trouble here. You make your decision, but here's our advice. Um, you got it. Ideally, the, with the more clarity that Amazon operates, that yellow portion would disappear completely, but they're not always consistent. So, you know, that's the world we get to play in. But you guys are doing a, a great job serving the community well. Looking forward to seeing you at the conference, The Proven Conference. You're a great sponsor this year. I really appreciate that, man. We are so happy to be able to help so many people go to the conference this year. So, you know, yes. it's uh, it, it's really exciting. When I talk, I've talked to several of our clients that have gotten some of those, gotten some of the scholarship tickets. and. It's really exciting to to be able to say, "Hey, I can't wait to see you in July and right. talk face to face about your business." So yeah, I'm excited for, for it. make that possible for sure. You guys were the top sponsor at the event this year, and we're very generous and absolutely, like you pointed out, we've been able to offer many people scholarships. We still have a handful, actually. If someone sure. wants to inquire about that, they can go to theprovenconference.com/slash/scholarship, fill out the form. If finances are a little tight, you're checking out our community, but you can't quite justify the expense, we'd love to get you there at no cost. Come. Just experience this community. Here, Jeff, he's going to be speaking, presenting on several great topics, rolling out some new stuff that we can't wait to bring to the community at some great discounts yeah. just for attendees. Uh, this right. goes for live stream listeners as well. If you can't attend, get to theprovenconference.com and look for the live stream option. We're going to have a lot of people join us that way too, Jeff. But thanks awesome. for hanging out with me today, man. Can't wait to do this Thank again. You. next week. Are we on? That sounds good. All right. All right. Talk to you then. Thank you. See you.